Hello everyone. In this episode, we will talk about performing ANOVA and POSTDOC test using Microsoft Excel. And the objectives are the following. To perform an analysis of variance followed by a POSTDOC test using Fisher's least significant difference and to provide a sample discussion of results. And we are now in the second part of the roadmap in performing one-way ANOVA. And in this part two, we will start by performing an alpha test in Microsoft Excel using this given situation. A customer would like to know if the new car interest rate between the six cities of a certain region are different. So our job is to test the hypothesis below at a 95% level of confidence using the collected data provided in the ANOVA Demo 2 tab of the given data link here. So let's do it. So once you open the file, Go to ANOVA Demo 2 tab so you can find this data set wherein we have six columns from A to F that contains the data which refers to the new car interest rate between the six different cities of a given region. So our job is to test the hypothesis that is whether there is a significant difference in the new car interest rate between the six cities. So to perform an analysis of variance in Microsoft Excel, go to Data, and upon clicking the Data, go to Data Analysis, and once you click that, the Data Analysis dialog box will appear. So we will choose ANOVA Single Factor and click OK. So clicking OK, and the next thing we are going to do is highlight all the data for the input range. So click this field and highlight all the data including the labels there then since the independent groups are grouped by column so we have to choose column here then don't forget to check labels in first row and set the alpha to 0.05 and we will generate the result in this worksheet since i have an extra space here so i have to click this cell here then click ok this is the generated result by performing the analysis of variance in this data set. So our next job is to interpret the result. So after we perform the analysis of variance, the next thing that we're going to do is to interpret its generated result. And here's the generated result of the ANOVA that we just performed a while ago. It's composed of two tables. We have a table for the descriptives and we have the table for the ANOVA result. So we are interested in comparing the p-value to 0 0.05. And in this example, the p-value is actually less than 0 0.05. It's 0 0.001. So what does it mean when the p-value in the ANOVA table is less than 0 0.05? So to recall the decision rule, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we will conclude that there is a significant difference among the means of the three or more independent groups. So therefore, since the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we can say that there is a significant difference in the new car interest rate among the six different cities. The only question is, which pair of cities has a significant difference in their new car interest rate? Is it city A and city B? Or is it city A and C? CTA and B, CTA and E, CTA and F, or is it city B and C, B, 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 E, and any possible pairings we can actually create from these six different cities? So, which pair of those cities actually has a significant difference in the new car interest rate? So, when you use the ANOVA test to determine the equality of the means, of at least three independent groups, a statistically significant results indicate that not all of the group means are equal. This simply means that at least one pair of groups show a significant difference in their means, but it does not tell you which specific groups differ. Thus, we need to determine which pair of groups have significant mean difference using a post test. So now let's proceed to the highlight of this video and that is performing post test in Microsoft Excel. But first, what is a post test? 
The Latin word post hoc means after this. In a NOVA test, post hoc test is performed to uncover the specific differences between three or more groups. We will only perform post hoc tests once we identify in the ANOVA test that there is a significant difference among the three or more independent groups. And note that there are many options to select from for post hoc tests and they are categorized depending on the equality of variances. However, in this example, in this demonstration, we will be using the Fisher's least significant difference. Most papers actually utilize LSD, even if it has been criticized for not sufficiently controlling the type 1 error. However, in this demonstration, wherein we will be using a Microsoft Excel, it will be in our advantage for practical reasons because it requires less effort for manual computation since the formula is simple compared to the other post hoc tests listed in this table. The objective in performing post hoc tests is to accomplish this five column table. So the first two columns here refers to the all possible unique pairings between the given independent groups. The next information that we need to find is the mean difference and we will put that in the third column of this table. So when we say mean difference, it is the mean of the first group minus the mean of the second group, in particular for the first row. So we will subtract the mean of A by the value of the mean of B, hence mean of A minus mean of B. Similarly, we will subtract the mean of A by the mean of C. So we have mean of A minus mean of C and so on and so forth. So the next information that we're going to solve is the value of the p-critical by using this formula. So I will not be too technical with these notations. What I'm going to do is to simply point out where to get the information and values for this formula. So for our numerator, so we just have to plug in the mean difference given in each row. The next information that we need to identify is the variable n. Again, assuming one here refers to CTA, variable two refers to CTB, so n here should be the number of sample size from CTA, and n2 here refers to the number of sample size in CTB. So next is the MS within groups. So the value for the MS within groups can be found in the ANOVA table under column MS and row within groups. So it's here. So that is the formula and where we can get those information to be plugged into the formula. So the last information that we're going to compute to complete this table is the p-value. And we can compute the p-value by using this formula in Microsoft Excel. Equal sign t.dist.2t followed by the two arguments. First is the absolute value of the t, critical, meaning negative values are not allowed. So only the positive values of the t should be included here, followed by the degrees of freedom, wherein the degrees of freedom can again be found in the ANOVA table under column DF and row within groups. So in this example, that is 48. So now, allow me to demonstrate how to perform the post hoc test in Microsoft Excel. Now let's perform the post hoc test using the least significant difference in Microsoft Excel. It's actually the Excel file that we used when we performed the ANOVA test a while ago. So the objective of performing the post hoc test using LSD is to accomplish the five column table I presented a while ago. It's actually here. So this is the five column table that we're going to accomplish. So we already accomplished the first two columns. So what we need to accomplish is the mean difference, the p-value, and the p-value. I will be demonstrating this in a step-by-step -step process. That's why I have created a table with a series of columns. So originally, these are the five columns of our five-column table. So these are the two groups. This column is for the mean difference, mean 1 minus mean 2. Next. In the far end, we have the t-value, 
and the key value. So if you notice, there are added, there are added columns in between because in that particular area we will be doing our computation. So now let's start with the first one. Well, the first one is basically to identify the pair of groups, which we already did. So the second step, therefore, is to identify the difference of the mean of the first group, which is the one in this cell, in this particular column, and subtract the mean on the second group, which is found on the second column. So to get the mean, all we have to do is to copy the mean of the first group and put it here, copy the mean of the second group and put it here, and we'll be getting the mean of these groups in the this descriptive table of the ANOVA result. So let's do that. By the way, here are the means of those particular groups, mean of A, B, up to F. So let's copy that and put them here. Now I already copied the mean from the descriptive table. The next thing that I'm going to do is to get the mean difference. So to get the mean difference, just subtract the mean of the first group to the, uh, by the mean of the second group. So to do that, let's, let me zoom this in. Just type equal sign, click the mean of the first group by clicking on this cell, minus the mean of the, uh, uh, the, mean of the second group by clicking on this cell, then press enter. Then do that all the way down to the last row. But in Excel, we have a shortcut. Just go to the lower right of this particular cell, and once you see the cross symbol, drag it all the way down to the last row. That's it. Actually, the main difference is the numerator of the computation of T. The step that I'm going to demonstrate is to start by computing the sum of this reciprocal, which is here. And to get the sum, I have to get first the individual reciprocal of N. But I don't have that yet. So I have to get first the individual sample size of the group here. So n1 refers to the sample size of the corresponding group in this particular cell. N2 here, for example, in this particular cell, refers to the sample size of the group in this particular cell. Let's follow the color coding. So where can we get the sample size? The sample size can actually be found in the descriptive table of the ANOVA result. It just so happened here that the sample size happen, happens to be the same, but be careful because there are some cases where in the sample size of one particular group is not always the same with the other groups. So in this case, let's just type 9 and copy it all the way down to the last row. Similarly, for the second group, let's type 9 and copy all the way down to the last row. Then the next thing that we're going to do is to get the reciprocal of this corresponding sample size so that we have this information. Then we have to add that after. So to get the reciprocal, what we're going to do is to simply type equal sign, then type 1, divide symbol, then click this particular cell and press enter. Then drag it all the way down to the last row. So let's do the same on this particular column. One divided by this particular cell, follow the color coding, or enter the labeling, then drag it down to the last row. Now that we have the 1 over n1 and 1 over n2, we can now add these two fractions and put the answer here. Okay, so let's do that. So to do that, all we have to do is to type equal sign, Click 1 over n1 plus symbol. Click this particular cell 1 over n2, then press enter. Then let's simply drag it down to the last row. There. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is to find the value of the MS within groups. As I mentioned before, this can be found in the ANOVA table. Of the ANOVA results, it's actually here. So it's under MS column and within the within groups row. So let's just copy that, Control C, 
Let's go here and let's copy it here. Copy. Then what we're going to do, let's remove the color to avoid confusion, is to drag it down all the way down to the last row. So we copy that already. So the next thing that we're going to do here, let's follow the formula here, is to multiply the MS within groups to the sum of these two reciprocal numbers. So we call this the radicand. Radicand is the number inside the radical sign. So to do that, all we have to do is to multiply the theta in this column to the theta in this column. So in Excel, just type equal sign, click this cell, then multiply sim multiplication symbol, which is asterisk, then click this cell, then press enter. Then just drag it all the way down to the last row again. There. Now we're almost done. The next thing we're going to do is to get the square root of the radicand. And since the radicand is this number, so all we have to do is to get the square root of that by typing equal sign S U R T open parenthesis, then click that cell, close parenthesis, then press enter. Then drag it down to the last row. There. So now, to complete for the value of t, all you have to do is to simply divide the mean difference, which can be found in this column, by the value in the denominator, which is the square root of the radicand. So let's just divide this the value in this cell and the value in this column, in this particular cell. So let's do that. Equal sign. Click this cell here. Click. Divide. Divide by. Click this particular cell here. Then press enter. Okay. Then let's drag it down up to the last row in this table. Now we already have the value of t. The last step we're going to do is to compute for the value of t. To compute for the value of t, what we need is this formula. Type equal sign, then t dot this dot to t, followed by the argument absolute value of t. Absolute value means the positive values of these numbers. However, in Excel, we have a shortcut to do that by typing a particular function, and that is abs. Then followed by the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is actually 48. Okay? 48 can be found in the ANOVA table again under the degrees of freedom column and within groups row. So just copy that 48. So let's create now the syntax for the computation of the t value. So type, let's use on this. In, then type equal sign t dot dist dot two t open parenthesis. Now our job is to get the absolute value of the t. And to make sure that we're getting the absolute value, let's type the word the syntax abs followed by open parenthesis, and we reference it here. However, at the moment, I cannot click this cell because it's been occupied by the syntax of the formula. So what I'm going to do is to click this cell for a while and I have to move that one cell to the right there. So in that case, I already selected this particular cell. Then close parenthesis, sorry, comma, followed by the degrees of freedom. So in this particular instance, let's just type the degrees of freedom, which is 48. So let's type 48, then close parenthesis. So now that we completed the syntax, press enter there. So all we have to do is to simply drag it all the way down to the last row. And now we have the t value. Now that we completed computation of t, 
let's accomplish for now the five column table here as the objective of the competition or the postdoc test. The third column here is the mean difference, so let's highlight this one. Or you can actually type equal sign here and click to the upper cell here that contains the data for the mean difference, then press enter. Now we copied it already. Then just drag it all down to the last row. Do the same for T. Type equal sign. Equal sign. Then go to the first value in the T column there. Click that cell and press enter. Then drag it all down to the last row. Then finally, let's have the P again. Press equal sign. In reference it to the first value in the P value column, then press enter. Then drag it on down to the last row. Now that we have this information, the next thing that we're going to do is to interpret this result. So recall, upon performing the ANOVA test, we identified that the P value is less than 0 0.05, which means there is a significant difference in the new car interest rate among the six different cities. Whatever the problem is, which pair of cities has a significant difference in their new car interest rate? So that's where the post hoc using LSD comes in. This table here will answer that very question. In particular, we will look at the p-value column, especially to the p-values that are less than 0 0.05. So I already highlighted them here and we have six pair of cities that show significant difference in the new car interest rate. In particular, in this example, city A and city F has a significant difference in the new car interest rate. Similarly, city B and city C has also a significant mean difference in the new car interest rate as well as B and E. C and F, D and F, and E and F. And just to compare the result of our POSOC test using LSD in Microsoft Excel to the result of the recom one of the recommended software for research publication, they are actually the same. For example, what is the p value by comparing the means of group A and group B. So in our computation, we have 0 0.07 and SPSS AB, we have 0 0.07 as well. For example, the p-value for group C and B and C, CTB and CTC, we have here 0 0.03, B and C here, we have 0 0.03. So the integrity of our result is actually similar to the integrity of the result of the SPSS. Now, how are we going to discuss the interpretation of the information in this table? So we can have this paragraph. Since the ANOVA table shows that there is a significant difference in the new car interest rate among the six independent groups, which are the cities, the post hoc test using LSD was performed to examine where these differences lie. In table three at the left, those highlighted cells show the p-values that are less than 0 0.05. Therefore, the new car interest rate is significantly different among the following cities. City A and F, City B and C, City B and E, City C and F, City D and F, and City E and F. In general, this is how the discussion of the result of the entire ANOVA test plus post hoc test should be presented. So we can say table 1 presents the new car interest rate among the six different cities. A total of 36 valid cases were examined with equal number of sample size per city, which is equal to 9. It is shown that city E has the highest new car interest rate, followed by city C, followed by city D, city A, city B, while city F has the lowest new car interest rate. 
there is a significant difference in the new car interest rate among the six cities as determined by One Way ANOVA presented in Table 2. We copy this justification. Hence, post hoc test using LSD was performed to determine which cities show a significant difference in the new car interest rate. So as shown in Table 3, only the following cities show a significant difference in the new car interest rate. City A and F, City, C, City B and C, City B and E, City C and F, City D and F, and Cities E and F. And please indicate that the P is less than 0 0.05. I guess that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching.